Welcome everybody to this edition of Data to Decision regarding Tabulate and Solve. Hey, my name is Chris Banks. I'm with Pyramid Analytics. Boy, you are in for a treat today because joining me is a legend who I'm going to introduce shortly. But if you're not aware of who Pyramid Analytics is, we are a leader in business intelligence analytics. In fact, our decision intelligence platform is what's next in analytics. What we've done is we've combined the very best of data prep, business analytics, and data science in one single frictionless platform. And it is business user centric. We're trying to get you the high scalability that you deserve. Our platform covers the gamut from the simple to the sophisticated, and it's a no code platform. But probably the biggest differentiator for us is the ability of directly accessing any data in your data estate with the high performance that you deserve as well. We deploy on-prem and in the cloud, a hybrid of the two. And with that being said, we want to talk today a little bit about um, business modeling as well as decision modeling and two of our components that cover that. And without further ado, I would like to introduce the one and only Ian McDonald. Ian? Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much, and welcome, everybody. Um, it's going to be my pleasure today just to talk a little bit about the business modeling and decision modeling uh, that we have recently added to the Pyramid platform. And I'm going to be moving fairly quickly through this and some pre-prepared examples. But effectively, what we're doing is bringing the spreadsheet to the data. You probably all used analytic and BI tools in the past and at the end of the day needed to export the results of your analysis and put it into Excel for that final last mile of analysis, either for specific formatting and things that Excel provide or for maybe some more advanced analysis using things like uh, optimization algorithms, etc. Problem with that, of course, is that I end up with that spreadsheet hell of data everywhere and nobody is quite sure which one is the right version. Bringing the spreadsheet into a governed analytic platform means that I retain control and management of my data at all times, while at the same time being able to leverage those specific analytic capabilities that spreadsheets bring to the environment. So without further ado, what I want to do is show you two examples of how we can use Tabulate, the spreadsheet in our platform to do kind of analysis between different data sets and queries from different sources, but then also how we can go to a more advanced level by looking at decision optimization using the Solve Engine as part of the Pyramid platform. So I'm sitting here at my Pyramid Home Hub. Um, I've got some examples already open, so I'm gonna go straight to those. And this first one where I've created a query, in fact, in this case, I'm analyzing direct query to SAP BW, as you can see in the line above here. And I've pulled out some information about my customers, uh, their order quantity and their amount that they ordered in terms of their local currency. However, I've also been doing recently a customer satisfaction survey. And so I've loaded that data into Pyramid's in-memory database and created a query for that as well. So in this case, we're looking here at my customers and their score or satisfaction rating that they've given us from zero to 10. Now, what I want to do is combine the output of these two analyses. Now, I could actually look at the database solution and blend the data together, but this is really just a quick ad hoc one-off situation. I don't want to go to all that trouble of creating a blended data set in the server. I want to basically take the output of my two queries and use those together to find my solution. So what I want to be able to do effectively is combine these two, take the values of my score from one, multiply it by my amount from the other, uh, and look at how that may be a predictive indicator of how kind of spend that those customers will have in the future based on how happy they are with the services and products that I've asked, asked for. So I've opened up Tabulate in a new tab. So here we go. This, this is Tabulate sitting inside the Pyramid platform. You'll see straight away that it's entirely familiar if you've used any kind of spreadsheet technology in the last few years. This will be entirely familiar to you. You can see I have my standard grid and at the top of menu with a lot of the features and functionality that would be familiar to you uh, using another spreadsheet application. So I've got my worksheet here. Currently, it's empty. What I want to do is to take those queries and drop the data in and of course, in future, be able to update these on a continual basis. 
So if I go to my recents when I queried, I've got my customer spend. So I'm going to simply grab this and drop it into my first cell here. Pyramid runs the query into SAP BW, directly querying my data, and pulls that out and drops it into my spreadsheet, as you can see here. I want to bring my second query in, simply drag and drop to the cell that I need it in. And in this case, I was going to see a new connection. Let's just apply. Oops, in the case, I messed that up again straight away. So let's undo that one. I want my satisfaction rating, of course. Let's drop that in here. Picked up the wrong one. There we go. So you can see straight away now I've got my two data sets together. And of course, if you're familiar with working with spreadsheets, you'll know that I can actually look up values from one set to another. So I may want to start creating some additional calculations in my sheet, combining the data from these two different sources. So I want to create a new column in here, maybe which is called, let's say this called this my weighted revenue. And we can stick that in. And of course, I can take in terms of familiar items, a spreadsheet, for example, I can take my format painter and simply drop that in to give my weighted revenue. And then what I want to do is to create a calculation in here. Uh, in this case, I've pre-written it here. You can see it's a straight lookup. I'm taking my customer name, looking up in my customer satisfaction rating, bringing my score across, and then multiplying my net amount with that to give me my new column. So here, I'm actually combining the outputs of two entirely different queries, one direct querying SAP BW, the other my own uh, in-memory data set that I've got from my satisfaction rating, and I can give my weighted values accordingly. Of course, standard spreadsheet features and functions, things like uh, auto sum in here. Again, I can maybe want to do the second one, maybe set that to an average, etc. I can also start visualizing this as well. So I may want to take maybe a subset of my data or take my customers, for example, and my new weighted revenue and create a visualization. And again, we've copied and borrowed and used some of the advanced features and easy to use stuff from Pyramid in order to be able to create this easily. So I can simply right click on my selected items and choose, for example, to create a column chart from that resulting data. And this visualization I can take and then embed in subsequent Pyramid dashboards and publications for easy distribution to my colleagues around the business without having to, of course, emailing the source data, the data set in a spreadsheet, and of course, that getting out of date very quickly. So sharing this within this collaborated and governed environment within Pyramid secures my data, makes sure that we're all looking at the same set, and of course, I can update this every time I open up, I can refresh the data with a new query to get the latest data. So that's a simple and quick example of how we can uh, create a data mashup at the front end for my query results, quickly create additional spreadsheet calculations between the data and visualize the results. So this is what we could call, if you like, business modeling, the kind of thing that business managers do pretty much every day of the week working inside their spreadsheet. But we want to go a little bit further. So I pre-created a decision model where I want to look at, in this case, looking at my power generation capabilities, where I want to optimize or in fact minimize the cost of producing the sufficient power that's needed with a number of constraints in my particular power business. So you can see I've actually created a number of queries here on my screen. I've queried my database in terms of my data source, the megawatt hour cost and capacity. I've similarly got a level of pollution that each of these sources will generate. And I've got a um, limit on how much of that pollution I can create. And I've also put a constraint on in terms of I want to start moving to a greener source of energy. So I want a minimum amount of solar and wind uh, generating power as part of my mix. I got a target I want to reach, and I've also got some uh, what we call economies where I'm getting perhaps a subsidy from the government for a percentage generation of, of green energy. So all of these things together, I want to know what's, what's the mix of my power generation and capacity and different types in order to achieve the target output at a minimum cost. So we can see in here on my grid to the left, we have a target, if you like. This is my cost that I want to create. And this is the value that I want to minimize. 
we've got obviously the cost per hour and how much the quantity from each of those to generate the percentage used given my total cost and obviously the total amount there at the bottom. So what I want to do is given all of this mix and given my constraints, what's the mix of my power sources and the amount and the cost that I need to be able to uh, generate in order to generate sufficient power, but at the minimum cost possible. So this is one of these optimization type problems. I've got a number of constraints and I need to use those to generate or understand my minimum amount. So we can go to an option in here which we call solve. This will bring this up. And um, we can see it asks me a number of questions. What do you want to do? I want to minimize, maximize, or achieve a particular value. And on my sheet, we can see I want to minimize this value here, my total cost. But I want to do that by changing the values in the range of cells, which is basically what quantity of power do I want to take from each of these sources to achieve that particular goal. And then I can define my constraints. So I have a target, if you like, or what I want to actually reach. You can see this identified here. And obviously the quantity in terms of the capacity that I have at my disposal, as well as a number of other items in here in terms of you know, wind and solar type capacity and solutions that I want to deliver. So all of this taken together, bearing in mind these constraints, I want to understand what that might be. So if I apply and close, will actually generate and work out the optimum value, which in this case is $353,000 odd dollars. Now I want to be able to share this with my managers in the different regions, but I also want when I share it for them to be able to look at the value for their specific region as well. So what I've done in this case is to create a visual area, which is my power decision. So this range of cells here, this final grid, and I want to be able to share that and embed that in a dynamic dashboard. So once I save this item, I can then incorporate it into directly into my dashboard. So here I've already created a dashboard already. As you can see, it allows me to look at my different regions and we look at, at a forecast for my power requirements, the different range of sources I have and the operational impact that might have in terms of my employees, et cetera. So I want to bring this final piece in here as a prescriptive analysis to tell my managers of each of my region what their power mix should be. So if I look at my recent activity, if I look at my pollution solver, we can see that my visual area, my power decision is highlighted here. So I can simply pick this visual area up and drag and drop it into my spreadsheet, into my, sorry, into my presentation and position it where I need to in here on my, on my uh, slide. I also had a number of sliders, I didn't look at them in my sheet, but I can also change the target that I set with a scalar. So basically, you know, what percentage of my target am I trying to achieve? And then I also have my renewable economies, what level or percentage the discount or rebate I get from the government for my uh, green energy transmission. Having done that, I can say I want all of these things to interact. So if I show my interactions, we can see Pyramid's automatically linked my spreadsheet with my filter here at the top. So at runtime, when I look at this, we can see that in this case, looking at the East region, we now have a different level of uh, cost. So it's 424,000. As I change my filter and look at the South region, then the reoptimization engine recalibrates for the data from the South region and reoptimizes to give me a minimum cost for my South region of 339,000 with a slightly different mix. Again, I could change if I got my rebate maybe at a different level. Again, resetting that, we can see this actually shows up as a different value. And of course, all of my other items across here will change as well for each of those regions, as you can see. So this is a way where we can use the power of decision modeling within a spreadsheet type environment to create additional and flexible analytic solutions for your business and to be able to share that and collaborate and deliver those to your business users with no ambiguity in terms of the data involved. So that's pretty much what I was gonna cover on this session. It's very fast, I know, and very quick, but hopefully that's given you a taster. Chris, do we have any questions that may have cropped up during this session? <laughs> oh my gosh, the switchboard has been lighting up, Ian. Uh, here's the first one that came in. Okay. Is this a replacement for Excel? 
A good question. Um, we don't look at it that way. We don't look at Tabulate as a replacement for Excel, uh, but what where we do position it is to actually address those analytic solution requirements where previously you've had to export data out of your analytic platform to Excel for that last mile of analysis. Either that kind of high level of grid type formatting, particularly perhaps on financial type reports, but also where I need to go to that next level of prescriptive analytics and decision modeling, where I can make use of my backend solve engine for optimization, but retain that sort of business familiar spreadsheet type interface for building those types of decision models. So it's not really a replacing Excel entirely in your organization, but probably a lot of the times that people use Excel is, as I said earlier, to ex extract and dump out of your analytic systems because it's difficult in those to share and collaborate and do that last mile of analysis that spreadsheets offer. So here we can bring the spreadsheet into the platform and give that governed and collaborative solution and leverage the power that spreadsheets can bring to that last mile of analysis. This person has a second question for you. Mm -hmm. What spreadsheet functions are available? Uh, we actually, it covers off, I can quickly show that we actually do um, emulate or replicate the functions available in Excel. So I think there's 500 plus odd functions in there. So if we could go back into my tabulate, let's open a new one, actually, it's probably the easiest uh, if I create a new tabulation in here and start to look at my functions, for example, you can see that there's some specific pyramid functions to do with interacting with the backend queries and databases. But otherwise, things like date time functions, engineering, financial functions, you'll find that we actually cover pretty much all of the types of functions you'd find in Excel. And so if you are a Excel power user in the finance group, you still have all of these finance functions available as well as all of the standard kind of logical lookups, um, statistical functions, text functions, etc. And each of these, of course, and there's a kind of a wizard help where you can actually start to create these in, in the same way you'd find in Excel, but maybe in a slightly more intuitive fashion, we'd like to think. But we do cover, as I said, the sort of 500 plus Excel functions available to you. Excellent, excellent. Um, here's one. Can I import existing Excel spreadsheets and workbooks? Yes, you can. Uh, it's always a question of where that is on the uh, on the view in here. Uh, but again, I can things like doing um, freezing panes, extending the worksheet, etc., and my imaging and capability. And I can also import Excel files into here as well. Bear in mind, of course, we're running a spreadsheet application in a browser. Uh, you're not going to have the sort of million plus rows available to have Excel, which is why we don't position it that way. But effectively what you can think about is that we're actually exposing a spreadsheet window backing into a high end and powerful and scalable analytic engine and all of the data that sits behind that. So a lot of the reasons that people have for putting you know, 200,000 rows of data into a lookup table in Excel and a pivot table is to do the analysis in Excel here. We have, if you like, the world's largest pivot engine sitting behind us. So we don't need to drop that huge amount of data in. So yes, you can import Excel sheets, um, but again, we're primarily here sort of database focused rather than using the spreadsheets itself as the data store. Excellent, excellent. And one last question, how big can an optimization model be? And are there any constraints with that? Um, Obviously, there is a constraint, uh, but bear in mind, we're not running the optimization engine in your browser or on your laptop. It's running on the backend server pyramid cluster. So effectively, you can scale that pretty much as much as you wish. You may have hundreds or thousands of constraints. Um, obviously, setting those up is a bit of work, but effectively, you can run extremely sophisticated and large decision models. Uh, all of the optimization algorithm and the engine is running on the back end server rather than in the browser or on your laptop. So effectively you can scale that to whatever type of decision model you require. Excellent. Thank you, Ian. So I'm hoping that there are more questions or we got your attention certainly with that fantastic demo that Ian just went through. And we'd like to propose for you to choose your own adventure if you'd like more information. If you'd like to request a demo, you can see the link right there. If you'd like to take a tour, we have a tutorial 
actually up on the website, you can go step by step and see all the different capabilities that we can provide. Um, in fact, we are probably the most broadest platform available today with our breadth of capabilities, but you can go to the link there to see our decision intelligence platform. And if you'd like to see how we work with open AI, and that also includes tabulate and solve, there is the link that you can see. It's a short two minute video, but you can check that out. And then the last thing, and I didn't talk about it earlier, so I wanted to save it for now, but in this year's Gartner Magic Quadrant, we were the vendor with the greatest positive movement, not only up, but also over to the right. And the companion document to the Gartner Magic Quadrant, which covers company, with the companion document that covers the actual product is the critical capabilities report. It comes out about a month, maybe a few weeks after the Magic Quadrant. And there was only one vendor that was at the top with their four use cases and the 12 critical capabilities, which are the features and functions, and that was Pyramid Analytics. So we were ranked number one in that report. And if you'd like a copy of that, feel free to go to that link and get yourself a copy. So choose an adventure. You can choose all of them if you'd like, or one of them or none of them. But if you'd like more information, visit us on the web at pyramidanalytics.com. And that concludes our webinar today. Thank you.